Hello everyone, this is ZX Cameron's YouTube channel. I'm here to teach you everything you need to know about the Kilo 141. I'm going to help you become an expert on this weapon and give you great blueprint ideas and strategies to use them. Quickly, one thing I want to say, if you're just here for the builds, I've left the times down in the video description that are going to show you exactly where those are, and if you would like a little bit of advice on how to use them or just to see how I use them, just stick around until the end of the video, and we'll show you a good strategy for a couple strategies for each one. Uh, now this isn't just for specific kinds of players, I'm going to give you a variety of strategies and builds that are going to work for different kinds of players first build we're going to go over is just the weapon by itself with no attachments and we're just going to talk a little bit about how you can use this weapon if you're first starting out the game. Being one of the starter assault rifles you may want to know how to use it with no attachments. So out of the other 10 assault rifles if you look right here at these stats this is how this weapon compares to the other assault rifles. So it's in 6th place in accuracy, and that compares to the RAM and the GRAU. It's in 6th place in damage, which also compares to the RAM. 6th place in range, which compares to the M13. Uh, in 5th place, fire rate. Mobility is also in 5th place, and control is 3rd. So right off the bat, we already know that the number one thing that's going to stand out about this weapon is how easy it is to control during fire and flinch resistance when getting shot with this weapon. So let's get started. So uh, again, I just want to reiterate that this is a really easy to use weapon, even if you haven't done anything to modify it has really decent target snap even if you're going up against multiple targets it's really easy just to snap between the target that you want to hit also you can really tell how easy it is to control this weapon when you're getting shot if you watch closely or if you just hold down the fire at medium to medium long range uh, you don't really have to worry a lot about losing control of this weapon while you're shooting one thing I will say is uh, this weapon doesn't really fare that well in a one-on-one -on -one shootout. If you're coming straight up on someone who has a higher mobility weapon, if they, if they have more of an aggressive class or a submachine gun, something in that nature, they're probably going to beat you when you have this. So make sure when you're using this weapon that you're not just free sprinting around corners. Try and keep uh, keep your gun steady when you're going around a corner where you think you might see an enemy. That way you can be ready to shoot and it gives you an edge on those people who may have more of an aggressive class that they can use against you. The next blueprint we're going to talk about is mobility. Now the first thing I want to say is this has to be my favorite build. It's really easy to use, really, really fast to snapping on targets, although it doesn't have the best accuracy or range. Don't try to engage in people that are far away unless you're just going to uh, burst your shot. So just one bullet at a time. And I definitely recommend going with sleight of hand over a bigger mag with this gun because that's going to make your gun just a little bit heavier and take away from its mobility because with this class setup I could pretty much uh, win in a gun fight against anything. Okay, so if you're an aggressive player or you like to play really fast paced game modes this is a really good class that you're going to want to try. And I know most people probably uh, don't like to the attack laser but it actually does do a decent amount um, to your mobility of your weapon aiming down your sights faster and helping you stay on target so it's something that really helps a lot with this build so I recommend using the attack laser and remember that it's only showing when you're aiming down your sights so because you're moving so fast around the map people really aren't going to know your position by that laser because by the time you're aiming at them they should be dead.
So I honestly thought this weapon wouldn't work good with mobility until I tested it. And the reason it works so well is because you can snap so quickly onto your targets and you still have the ability to keep the weapon under decent control even without a stock because it's firing so slow that it's not going to kick up a whole lot like a submachine gun would. So it's really easy to stay on your targets and hit one after another. Alright, so the next blueprint we're going to talk about is control. So this, you need a little different playing style. You don't want to go aggressive with this class because it is really slow to aim down the sights. But since the control on this weapon is already better than most assault rifles, ramping up its control as much as possible makes it pretty much unstoppable when it comes to medium and long range kills. It's with the slow fire and heavy control, it is really, really easy to keep this weapon getting shot and under holding down the fire button. So if you're someone who likes to camp or just hold down a specific area, maybe you're playing an objective game, this is a really good class to use. It is really important to remember though, it's slow to aim down its sight. If you are running up on someone and they have a gun with higher mobility and you don't even have your sights aimed down, maybe you were just sprinting around the corner, you're probably going to lose that gunfight. So it's important to remember when you're coming up on an area that might have enemies, do not be sprinting and maybe even have your sights aimed down already before you hit that corner could give you an edge. Just remember not to move too slow when going around the corners because they will see your arms sticking out before you actually see them and that's going to give them an edge. So uh, one thing I have to recommend with this blueprint is the perk EOD or kill chain because you're going to be spending a lot of time in one area with this blueprint people are going to be hurling explosives and frag grenades and all kinds of things that you'll have to watch out for um, although if you're using this class to camp so you can gain kill streaks you may want to uh, replace EOD with kill chain and just watch out for people throwing the frag grenades because if you're not using a suppressor then uh, every time you shoot someone's gonna know where you are they might hurl a grenade up in the window and you have to watch for those kind of things. So maybe if you're in a building just every time you're giving away your position by killing someone or firing your weapon try and move to a different window. This is just gonna throw off the people who are coming back to revenge kill you or because they saw you on the radar. I think if you're going for increasing your kill death ratio with the Kilo 141, the best way to go is definitely the control class. I found it really easy to earn whatever kill streak I was going for. My KD was 2.0 at least in every match, and that's with using a weapon I'm not even familiar with. So I definitely recommend that class for people who want to use Kill Chain or just increase your KD. So one thing I do need to show you really quick before I show you this last build is how you save each build so you can reuse them without having to create it every time. And it's just right here when you go to select your weapon, you go right next to it. To, and it shows you all the different loadouts that you've unlocked either through the play store or through earning your battle passes and if you want to save it all you have to do is go to the gunsmith in your build after you've made it hold down L2 and it brings up this screen where you can save your custom mod by whatever name you choose 
The final class we're going to talk about is the range class. Um, I definitely recommend using this for ground war and war zone. You don't really want people to be running all the way up on you when you have this set up and it's because it is really really slow to aim down your sights. Uh, so originally when I put the variable scope on this weapon I thought that was crazy that's not going to work but I did it because it gave this class the most range that was possible even more than the sniper scope because um, when you switch to that second view in your scope it's actually more accurate than the sniper rifle. It has a better zoom. This is a really decent weapon with hip fire, so if you're just kind of tapping L1 to focus a little bit more on your target and hip firing, you should be able to get kills pretty easily with this weapon. So uh, another thing to kind of be aware of is it's this is still going to be like a four or five shot at long range if you don't hit them in the head. So you don't really want to hold down your fire or your scope's just going to start bouncing all over the place. Definitely don't engage in shootouts with this class. If uh, they're shooting you before you're shooting them, you're probably going to lose. So just make sure that when you're engaging targets with this blueprint that you're going after the targets that are unaware of your position. That's going to be the best way to kill people in this class. So uh, one of the things you really have to watch out for in ground war is if you see a scope glare from far away and it's probably looking right at you. So it may not be good to engage a scope glare with this weapon, however, if they see you and you know they see you, they might stay on that spot with their scope waiting for you to come back around the corner. So quickly just get behind cover and find a different approach that they're not going to be ready for and then that may give you the kill on those snipers. One of the strategies that I found really works with this weapon, if you're going up against multiple enemies, is to get behind cover, pop out and kill one at a time. That way you're not attracting all of the attention. Let some of your friends attract a little more attention as you go back behind the cover, then pop back out to get a kill, then the attention's on you, then you go back behind cover, then pop out again when you can. That's a really good strategy to use with this range. One thing that's really important to utilize with this class to give you a little bit more recoil control since you're using a scope is crouching, going prone, or mounting on walls. It made it really easy to keep that weapon under control while I was shooting. If you're not a big fan of ground war, war zone, but you do want to use this range setup, just swap out that variable scope with a hybrid scope and that's going to give you a good three times zoom when you're using the full scope and when you switch it to the holographic or red dot, whatever you're using, it's going to be easier to kill enemies in close range. So you can just kind of switch back and forth where you know you might be seeing some enemies that are going to be a little further away. It helps you control it a whole lot better.